Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to part two of episode five of Breaking News. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. And we're getting back into some awesome, cool 80s stuff coming out on the horizon. Let's get back with, we, we talked about Hotline Miami 2 in part one, Joe. Devolver Digital is not finished with us by any means. Another crazy, unique game coming from Devolver Digital with their developer from Toronto, Vagabond Dog, helming this one. It's coming out, actually, this month, May 21st, on PC only. It's called Always Sometimes Monsters, Joe. So, um, we really had to wrap our heads around this one. It, you know, the trailer doesn't say it all. You know, we really had to go to the developer's website, do some research. What have you learned about this game? How, how would you sell this, this to people? Well, this is a choose-your-own-adventure style role-playing game with, yes. a narrative, with, a, with a narrative tree that uh, you know essentially takes over, you know, takes place over the span of a month, and your goal is to, to try and get the your love of your life back. Yep, and you just have to make some really, really hard choices along the way. And, and the trailer says it's like, all right, what would you do to get back the person you love? What would you sacrifice? All the all these kind of hard choices. What's really interesting, Joe, is is the the way the choices are laid out. This game in that new hardcore fashion doesn't hold your hand okay so we notice like right or right from where the game opens you're you're at this uh this art show or something mm -hmm. you you i think you have a gallery or maybe you're an art buyer and you're tr no, no 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 it was uh it was a literary yeah. meeting uh, yeah actually and you're trying to find the next great writer and, and you see all these people in a room and, and your first inclination in rpg is well i should go talk to some people and find out what's going on and whoever you talk to is going to ask you uh, if you want to have a toast with them, like of some type of gin or wine or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can either choose to do it later or do it now. And if you do it now, unbeknownst to you, that becomes your main character. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the story is going to be constantly changing perspectives here. And uh, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, there's also going to be some, uh, some, like, like you said, there's going to be some, there's definitely some dark themes. And some hard moral decisions that you're gonna have to make along the way. Well, I mean, you, you mentioned narrative tree and ch choices, Joe. Like, how would you compare this to something like, say, Heavy Rain or Walking Dead? Well, it, it's definitely in, in that in that vibe of where you know it, it's your your question. You know, did I, did I make the right decision? And and you're just gonna, you're gonna have to just wait and see how it impacts the story. You know, something very very, very simple conversation wise that you may have said may not right away seem to have much of an impact, but later could. Yeah, constant cause and effect. I'd say even more so than Walking Dead. I mean, Walking Dead, yes, there is some sort of choice. Mm -hmm. It really boils down to who kind of survives with you at the end of the at the end of the season. But this, it seems like there's constant looping cause and effect, or really every mm -hmm. choice you make, every almost like every minute has an immediate story tree consequence. And, and that's why you were saying to me before when we were watching the trailer that it seems almost infinitely replayable. I mean, look at all the different characters and, and sexualities yep. that you can choose to align yourself with. And that's interesting, Joe, because we notice again from the intro that we find out the sexuality of your character really quick, whether they're gay or, or straight, depending on who you choose to talk to at the party, who catches your eye. It's yep. very interesting, and that's why I can see this game kind of catching fire too, because in this day and age where you know people people are unsure of whether to approach sexuality in games, Nintendo's kind of biting the big one for this recently, announcing that they're not gonna have same-sex couples in Tamadachi, you know, whatever, love or hate the decision, this is a thing now. And at least this game is trying to address different sexual preferences, and I could see it possibly gaining a wider audience and becoming a hit as a result. I hope so, and I think people are definitely gonna to wanna to play through this multiple times, just to see, you know, to make different decisions and see how that impacts the story. You know, they, yeah. and there's gonna be a wide variety of outcomes here. It's another one of these games where everybody's gonna get something different out of this game. That's right, and the other cool th fact is that this isn't just like a story-based RPG. I mean, there are roguelike elements to this too. Mm -hmm. It's been compared to another game called Cart Life in the sense that you actually have to hold down a job, you gotta pay bills, maintain a social life, and if you suck, you're gonna end up on the street. So it's kinda like Don't Starve set in like the big city as like a modern relationship simulator. Yep, yep there's so, def definitely that element of there too, almost like a survival aspect to it right where relationship like, horror survival relationship yeah. horror there we go yeah, there, we, there, we just coined an rpg there's definitely more to this game that i think immediately meets the eye 
Yeah. So don't, yeah, that, that's the other thing too. A lot of Let's Play videos, like you know, get over the the, the, the pixel art graphics. You know, there's there's mm -hmm. something really deep here. There is. You know, that's that's something with in Devolver Digital's publishing style. They they like to stick to the these really cool unique looking games that that are almost punk rock and aesthetic i mean they're not the prettiest looking games but they don't they're, they're not it doesn't have the prettiest subject matter either nope. you know it, it's you know it, people might say oh how could devolver digital put out hotline miami 2 and always sometimes monsters aren't these two different games and i would argue no joe i mean these are both very noirish this 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 is anything but the sims joe always sometimes monsters this is a very dark tale of lust greed, adultery, backstabbing with a noirish ending. Somebody's gonna get killed, you see yep. it at the beginning, and you just have to find out how you end up at that point. Yep, it's, uh, this is just a, a very unique, uh, and, uh, you know, once again, Devolver Digital, you know, come out with some really cool, thought-provoking games here. Always thought-provoking. So that's coming out uh, this month, May 21st, on PC, and uh, coming up next, Staying in kind of like the philosophical, political territory here, to leave. This game's coming out from an Ecuadorian company called Free Creation, Freaky Creations, headed up by Estefanos Palacios. Now, so this was uh, a company that was set up through Sony's Latin Incubation Program. So, kind of tell us a little bit about how what what happens with that program, Joe. Well, they basically gave the, this developer who you know was having a, a tough time, and basically gave him the tools that he needed to, you know, to see his vision through, right? That's right. So they they gave him the dev kit, you mm. know, basically for free. They gave him the resources to make this game, and, and what we have in the vein of something like say like Jonathan Blow would do, or say Phil Fish, we have a very personal, metaphorical kind of retro homage puzzle platformer here. So. Yes. Tell us a bit about what's going on here, Joe. This seems like very dreamlike. Yeah, th this is d definitely very symbolic. A, this is definitely a hardcore puzzle platformer, but it's just a very strong emotional vibe going on here. Uh, this, you know, basically, you play the, the character of this boy. His name is Harm. You know, who's living in in a very, you know. He's, he's living in a town, and basically, he he he, wa he wants he wants he wants to to leave. And um, you know, it, it's it's um, the, 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 this battle of wanting wanting to leave, but but you know, still wanting to fall back on the, on the crutches of your, your everyday life, right? Yep, yep, that's right. Because the thing is, is that we I saw I read an interview with Palacios. He doesn't really make any blunt political statements about life in Ecuador, but if if you read between the lines, you you kind of get. What he's getting at, and and, yeah. and I'm not going to claim to be like the uh, an expert on what's going on in Ecuador. I've only begun to do my research, but that's the important thing. This game's gotten me to think now. Like, what is he saying here? Like, why is is is, is such a blunt reaction? The way he set this up is that the door that that harm is clinging to mm -hmm. is is basically the metaphor for how we fear change okay so it's like we always have this crutch that we're always resting on that in case things get too rough out in the real world we can always go back through that door to our old way of routine and that's what harm's dealing with right now palacio said that the 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 slave-like city of candice that he lives in i hope i'm pronouncing that right candice or candice it's it's essentially described as this place that uses its citizens as human resources. It, it, it blinds them with distraction, you know, and just kind of like we are here, you know, with all of our junk TV, and junk culture and fast food and all that stuff like that. It, it basically, it burns its citizens and uses them as fuel for, for a greatest purpose. So you can tell, like just even doing some rudimentary research into life in Ecuador, I mean, there's definitely corrupt government uh, a heavy 1% versus the 99% mentality. And I think that this game's addressing trying to escape that 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 climate, yeah. but not being able to because you're just, you're, you're scared. You're so stuck in your ways, Joe. Do you ever, yeah. do you ever kind of feel that way or absolutely. do you understand where he's getting at here? Uh, absolutely, I, I, I can definitely relate. And I, I, I think a large majority of people can. And for, for uh, that reason, I, that this game could possibly, you know, you know, I, th I think a lot of people are going to be able to, to re relate uh, to what's going on here if uh, people are willing to you know, check this game out when it does come out. A lot of people are going to, 
you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, we have, I'm a, I don't know how, how this is actually going to unfold, but, it, you know, it's going to, I don't know if it's going to help people it's kind of through to, to kind of deal with these kind of issues, but it's, it's you're de definitely going to be able to relate to what's going on here. That's probably the best way I can put it. I think you got it, Joe. I think he, he mentioned that. It's just the fact that this is, it is dreamlike. It, it's not really set anywhere. It, it, so anybody can really relate to this game, Joe. And I think anybody can kind of place themselves in the shoes of, of harm trying to get out of harm's way you know no pun intended but it's like uh yeah i think it's just like a game like journey where it, it's just so sublime and, and it crosses gender and racial boundaries where you can just be this character i think i think this this has the potential to maybe unlock that spirit in us all of of being able to make that change and that or, or overcome those fears that are kind of holding you back so wow tremendous stuff this is coming out for ps4 and vita only somewhere this year from freak recreation so keep an eye on to leave like i i love the fact that sony is trying to reach out to these smaller more impoverished developers who otherwise wouldn't have access to these resources i mean it's just it's just great to see opportunities like that be, being coming out and just kind of a side note joe i mean we were talking about this prior to recording here i i really think that love or hate the ps4 you know, people are complaining, including myself, that it is a little underpowered. It's not quite what we thought it was going to be. That might change with cloud gaming, but in lieu of that, what what Yoshida and Cerny and these dudes are doing that is right is just creating a new culture for Sony. I think they're reinvigorating that brand now by showing goodwill towards indies, towards third world countries, like like in this project. I I, I just I I see legendary status coming out and i and i hope nintendo and microsoft can wake up and, and try to see read between the lines of what sony is truly doing it's not about hardware this generation Stop it's about reinstilling trust after the failure of the vita and the ps3 well uh, absolutely you know, this console is the, this uh, generation you know the, the the hardware is what it is but it's it really is going to be about the games and with programs like this you know, we're, we're, I have the feeling that we're going to see a lot of these very unique experiences that normally wouldn't see the light of day. Exactly, exactly. So that's that's uh, to leave. Moving on. This one's a fun one. This one's coming out for PC, Mac, and Linux from Behold Studios. So this is based, uh, if you're a fan of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, you'll immediately be in love. This is kind of based on those those Sentai Japanese you know, TV shows that were really big in like the 2000s and even till today. Uh, this one's called Chroma Squad. So Joe, this one's um, kind of a, another mishmash of, of genres and ideas. We're getting some truly unique games here. What did, what did you see from Chroma Squad? This game, you are essentially a you're, you're a manager of this TV studio, and you hire the, these actors to, to, to take on the, these roles of of these Power Ranger like characters, and then uh, you you play then it becomes a, a real time strategy game, with uh, a lot of different elements going on, and then even even later with uh, their version of the boss battles and the combat system uh, going on there, very very cool stuff. Yeah, so you, you mentioned the strategy. Uh, this this definitely feels like an XCOM, but it, it's interesting because you're not. It, it's not taking itself seriously. It's it's a nope. meta textual game. You're not actually acting out one of the. Well, I mean, you literally are acting out one of these TV shows. You are yep. part of a troop of actors who play these Sentai warriors, and you actually see yourself stepping out onto the green state, the the, yep. the sound stage with the cameras rolling, and, and that's cool, man. Because it, it doesn't. It, you know what? The cartoony graphics. And the whole idea of the the, the, thema the thematics not taking itself seriously make yeah. this fun. And, and for anybody who's scared off by like maybe the hardcore serious nature of something like an XCOM or a Command and Conquer, mm -hmm. I think this is a way of getting people into like maybe I would almost call it RTS light. It all, it's kind of like a middle ground. It's kind of somewhere between like Rainbow Moon and, and XCOM. Yeah, and and also here in this same kind of vein as foul play and. Uh, Puppeteer, you're, you're also trying to uh, keep your, your your audience engaged. Yep. You know, and, and you know, you know, possibly, you know, if you if, if you don't perform, you know, eventually your show may get canceled. Yeah, right? that's awesome. So, I mean, you have yeah. a fan meter, which serves two purposes yep. because, like you said, you you have to keep getting fans to keep your studio running. That's that's the whole point of the game. It's like XCOM. You run a studio. So it's not just fighting. You're also managing Twitter accounts. <laughs> you're also managing the books. You know, it, it's, it's awesome. The fact that you're not only doing this awesome RTS, but you're just like, it's actually a command center, which, which gives you just 
so many levels plus narrative trees again we're seeing that genre that that, that 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 sorry that characteristic where you get multiple endings i love it how do you cram all this stuff into like this seemingly simple game man yeah so some uh, these guys are it's a very clever team here uh, you know once you get past that uh, that kind of French accent, you know, you, you, can, you can definitely tell, you know, even when we watch it, uh, how do you pronounce it, Chroma Squad? You know, Chroma Squad. But, but, but I mean, clearly these guys know what they're doing and, and are doing something really awesome uh, with this game. And well, this I is, figured you being French, you, you could relate on a personal level to the to the squad, so yeah, I, I, I knew that you bit, felt yeah. that when, when being a Frenchman, you, you, you understood, you were there. <laughs> so anyway, no, no, we're, we're, we're just playing. We, 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 we really dig in this game. This looks amazing. Yeah, it does. Um, it's called a Sentai Tactical Manager. And not only that, I mean, you've got the, the Rainbow Moon-esque XCOM battle environment, but yeah. here's the other thing I wanted to get at. With that fan meter, once you build it up to a certain level, you can unite your five characters into like a superpower and then into a mech that can actually fight giant monsters and then it gets into like this cool like turn-based Pokemon style battle but Joe not only that man something I've never seen before a create your own combo on the fly RTS yes, that is what very the cool. fuck is that it's so cool yep yeah, that, that's something I don't think that, I, that I've seen anywhere and uh Dun dun I'm sure it may be, wave. but wow, that's the first yeah. time I've seen this in action, man. Yeah, and, that is yeah, so cool. Yeah, and, and to, to pull off in that way, I remember just when we watched that trailer, you know, and, it, and it even before that, when uh, you, you can, with this idea to like chromatize, and then you can do these, uh, you know, group attacks. Like, oh, it's the, great. The, the, there's a tremendous amount of stuff here. I, I mean, it's another one of these ones where, uh, upon a first look, it may not look like as much. But uh, wow, I mean, uh, th there's uh, th this is by no means a, a simple game. You know, th there's a lot going on here, and it looks a like a hell of a lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah. So, the, yeah. And, but this one is not console bound. This is only PC, Mac, Linux. But this is still early in the game. And mm -hmm. like we said, you know, Fire Axis, like we said many times, crossed that bridge successfully into bringing RTSs into console territory. So I don't see any reason why this couldn't be adapted for, for the current gen of, of consoles. I really want to see it go to, to the wider audience, uh, mm -hmm. and especially with 90s kids who, who are growing up and coming of age who will totally dig this game. You've, oh, yeah. you've played Power Rangers games before, but never XCOM makes Power Rangers. So exactly. pretty sick from, the, uh, from Behold Studios, also the creators of Knights of Pen and Paper. So check that out somewhere this year, maybe, hopefully this year, maybe even early 2015. So moving on, uh, staying in the RTS uh, territory, um, but more in the tactics genre, this is a really exciting one coming out from Grimm Brothers, uh, somewhere again this year. It's called Dragon Fin Soup for the PC, PS4, PS3, and Vita, Joe. So what did we learn from watching the trailer to Dragon Fin Soup? Well, like here, first of all, the, the the name may be kind of deceiving because uh, I mean I'm not sure if that this is like a working title or not, but uh, the, the 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 game is uh, like we said, it's a tactics role playing game. But uh, you, your your main character is is uh, Little Red Riding Hood. But the, one of there's them, there's the, there's multiple characters. That was the one we got to see. Yeah. Yeah, but but I mean, it, it's these fairy tale characters, but in, in ways that you're not really expecting. You know, it, it, there's there's a, that that um, going on there, which is uh, very cool, and gonna make it so that you're not gonna be kind of able to, to kind of see what's gonna unfold here. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of like the Shrek approach to to fairy tales. It's like the fairy tale mm -hmm. with, the, with the modern kind of urban attitude and the slang and and even just taking tropes and mixing them up i mean the fact is that now you're red riding hood but you also have the big bad wolf as, as one of your cohorts in your party and, and the fighting system is really interesting too joe so again it really me it really reminds me of final fantasy tactics yep. and, and the way that the enemies are laid out and how battles happen but thematically too running with the rest of our show it's got again roguelike elements yeah. So, and when, and when you when you when you really delve into this, you know, I, I think that this is something that may even uh, appeal to people like uh, Diablo, because once you get into uh, your, your your abilities and your weapons and the crafting, when you when you open the, that menu up, the, the, there's it's almost uh, like a Dungeons and Dragons kind of elements you see, mm -hmm. like uh, depending on the weapons that you have, uh, how they're, they're you know, fire gonna, damage, water damage. Yeah, it's it's very very. I, I, I think you, it's you're deep. 
you, you, you're going to be able to go, you're probably going to be able to play in a couple of different ways. You're, you could probably play through it uh, without going into that too much, but if you're willing to, you can really get right into the guts of this and really kind of, you know, really soup up your character. Yeah, and, and uh, like Steamroll Dig, you know, it's meant to be played multiple times in the sense that uh, the, the levels are also randomly generated. So, um, just yeah, just exciting stuff. Uh, another bridge in the gap between PC and Sony. This one's called Dragon Fin Soup from Grim Brothers for for you fans uh, who like your fairy tales a little tossed with a little bit, of, you know, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, maybe kind of like Wolfing Amongst Us. This yep. is gonna be up your alley. All right, so moving on to our final game, staying in the RTS territory, and I'm, I'm loving this, man. Now that XCOM has has broken the gates open for for console-friendly, intuitive RTSs to come out, we've got There Came an Echo from Iridium Studios, which which feels like XCOM meets like Ghost Recon, mm -hmm. uh, but with like a new thing about it. Joe, what what is going to set this one potentially apart from other RTSs? What's going to set this apart is the, the fact that you can uh, use voice commands to set up your own. Your own, your own commands to, to, to control your unit. customizable uh, right like yeah you're gonna you're gonna be able to, to customize it it's you're not gonna just be reading off like a like a script you know you're, you're gonna be putting your, your own voice here and telling your guys to go to like to a certain checkpoint or to take cover or to provide covering fire or to, to flank you know you're gonna be able to do quite a bit here that's the thing but it's like I, I don't know how deep it's gonna go in customization my, my but my mind can only wander at the possibilities when you're streaming this and, and what you might assign to the voice <laughs> tags like this could get out of hand really quickly in terms of what you decide to name your characters <laughs> and the commands like hey shithead go piss up a wall you know and, that, and there, there he goes to take cover um, but yeah you know like, I, I love I love the way that the the mechanics themselves seem to be laid out in terms of using voice commands, not making this a cumbersome effort, you know, instead of having to know all the coordinates on a board, like saying C3 versus C2, it seems like there's just objective markers that actually have a coordinate on them. You yell out the coordinate, and then as you as your soldier travels on any pretty de predetermined path, they'll have some kind of dialogue that they'll quip out. So um, it looks very fluid and you know, just 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 tough as bones. Yep, and uh, you've got Will Wheaton uh, doing one of the one of the voices. So All Star Voice Cast, yes. Yes, so very cool too. Yeah, so this is uh, this doesn't have a date yet. I mean, I think we were when we were watching the trailer, they were probably just using you know dummy actors for the voiceovers. I mean, we we have some real A list talent that's really going to make this game come to life. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just see glorious things. But you know, whatever platform you're playing this on, you'll have a crack at this one somewhere, mm -hmm. maybe later this year or early 2015. So. That is part two. Stay tuned for part three of Breaking News episode five. We're going to come back with some of the games we're playing right now. Talk to you soon, guys. Peace. Game on, guys.